everyone and welcome to my lab. Now in this series we are going to be uh, satisfying a nostalgic itch of mine whilst you are going to be learning how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. Now why do I say a nostalgic itch of mine? Well, when I say an action RPG I am not talking about this. No, 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 I am talking about this. Yep, an old school 2D top-down action RPG like The Legend of Zelda. That is from when I was just a wee lad, so that is why it will be satisfying my bid for a bit of nostalgia, but hopefully we can all learn a little bit along the way about how to make an action RPG in the Godot 4 game engine. So what are we learning about in this first lesson? Well, we're gonna get acquainted with the Godot 4 interface, set up our project and create our first tile map. Well, why do we need to do this? Well, understanding the interface and the you know, project setup is the first step to making our game and the tile map where we need something to wander around in once we get our character going. The skills you'll need, well, you're just gonna to have to understand and apply what we do today. So some knowledge of project setup and tile maps. And your success criteria today looks like you being able to navigate that interface, start your project and build your very first Godot tile map. Okay, so before we go much further, let's do a little bit of a, a look-see at what Godot is and also we're going to have a look at where we're getting our assets from for this first lesson. So I've got the Godot website here as I'm sure you can see because it takes up most of the screen. Now what you'll notice is the version we're up to at the moment is 4.1.1. That's the version that I'm running on my machine. I do recommend you making sure that you've got the updated version on your machine as well. If you don't have it at all, now's the time to download it if you're able to. Um, and if you're doing this at home, you know that the link is just godotengine.org. Too easy. Um, the website you have a bit of a gander at it there's you know news and stuff they pop up there what i really want to bring your attention to though is down here the documentation um, it's fantastic to be able to easily find answers to questions you might have as you're going along so if you've decided to expand your knowledge a little bit work outside of what we're doing in the shoots then you can jump over here and find some answers to some of your questions fantastic right the other thing I want to show you as I said was the place where the assets are coming from so if you don't have these uh, this particular asset pack below maybe you're uh, you're doing this at home um, and you want these particular assets well the place you've got to have a look at is analogstudios.itch.io forward slash fantasy I'll put the link somewhere so it's visible you just now um, got to go down, you download it. Now you can download it for free or you can give a tip to the creator, which is always a lovely thing to do, but no pressure there. So those are the two sites I wanted to point out. Links and things will find their way onto the screen, I am sure, when I have uh, gone back to this later. Next for us though, is gonna be having a bit of a tour of the Godot interface itself. All right, so let's get into Godot. Uh, on the screen now, you'll see that we've got the Godot Engine Project Manager. When you open it up for the first time, you might find that you've got a little dialog box there telling you that you don't have any uh, projects as yet. Just hit cancel on that, nothing to stress about. Once you've got the screen just like mine, head on up to where it says new project, click on that, and we're gonna call it RPG Tutorial. All right, now click on the Create Folder button, that then just creates a folder of the same name as what we've called our project in wherever we've set our project path to be. So in my case, that's basically the root there. We're gonna leave it on compatibility and we're gonna to go to none for the version control and then click on create and edit. So that's then gonna open up the game engine itself for us. Ta-da! So when it opens up though, it gives us this 3D canvas. We're not doing no 3D garbage. We are doing a 2D top-down old school RPG. I want myself a lovely 2D plane. So we go up to the top where there's the 2D, 3D script asset lib. You're gonna click on the 2D one and bang, there we go. A lovely flat 
two-dimensional plane for two-dimensional thinkers like me. All right, so now a bit of a tour, I think. So let's do a little bit of a clockwise tour around Godot, shall we? So up the top, as we said before, we've got these like canvases here. So the 2D canvas, 3D canvas. You can also click over to the scripts. Now, next lesson, when we start messing around with our character and character movement, we're gonna play around with scripts there to get our dude moving, right? But what we're gonna find is down here is all the files of scripts that we've made. In here is where we type our code, our GD script. Don't stress if you kind of find coding a bit scary, you're gonna get comfortable with it pretty quickly. We're gonna work on it together. Do not worry about that. Keep it on going with the clockwise theme. We come across, we've got some buttons up the top there. That's for like running our scenes or running our game. Uh, as we come on down, you've got our inspector, all sorts of lovely juicy information appears in the inspector when you're like clicking on different elements and nodes and things. Um, you've also got, you know, your list of nodes where you can do things like uh, transmissions and signals and stuff. Down the bottom, you'll get a whole new bunch of menus. Stuff we do with our time map will be down here. Stuff to do with animations is going to be down here. Um, as we keep coming around to like, where are we at now? Like seven o'clock or something, I don't know. Uh, this is our file system, basically. So we're going to fill this up with lots of tasty, tasty assets up onto the top here and this is where we've got our roots uh root nodes and our uh, scenes and stuff like that that and that's godot man it's all about roots uh sorry nodes root nodes nodes and scenes scenes and nodes we will tackle it together and get our heads around it together don't worry about that so that's kind of a little bit of a clockwise around and around we go for the good 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 game engine let's uh now do something with it shall we all right, well, now let's actually do something in Godot. I'm sure that's what you've been waiting for. So heading on up to where we've got our create root node, we're gonna click on 2D scene, and that's gonna say now node 2D. I want you to right click on the node 2D and click on where it says add child node. Now over here, we'll get a, a lovely little menu box. We can either search by typing things or by scrolling through. We're gonna type things. So what we wanna actually add is a tile map. As we start typing it, you'll see it'll automatically go and find it for us. So yeah, we're gonna want that tile map. Here it is. Now there's some info down the bottom's changed, some info over here has changed. What we're gonna to need to do is come over here to our inspector that we mentioned earlier come down to where we've got tile map and tile set. See how we've got empty here in this drop down. We're going to click on that and we're going to click new tile set. So now we've set it up for a new tile set. Next step is getting our graphics into Godot so that we can then actually use those to paint our map. So the next step is getting our art into Godot. So I've gone and opened up the zip file that had all those art packs that we talked about earlier. And I'm going to now go to the forest folder and I'm gonna scroll down here until I find this forest underscore dot PNG. That's the one I wanna use. I'm not gonna tell you what you have to do. It might be easier if you copy the same things that I do or you might wanna go your own way. Completely up to you. Just make sure you're making the right choices so we end at the same point albeit with different graphics. So I'm just gonna drag that straight over here into the file menu, right? And bang, there it is, done. So what we actually wanna do now, we want this forest PNG to become our tile map or our tile set that we can turn into a tile map, right? So we've got up here tile set, we've got our forest PNG. What we're gonna do is we're gonna over here, down at the bottom, I'm gonna click tile set. And then I'm gonna drag my forest PNG into that menu there. Now, if you look up here, it's now come up saying, hey, this Atlas's texture was modified. Would you like to automatically create tiles in the Atlas? And I'm gonna click yes, please. So now we have a tile set that we can hopefully turn into a tile map. So the next step would be up to the top here, because I'm still in our scripts menu, which is a bit boring. Let's click on 2D. Now we've got a bit of a scene that we're gonna be able to start painting. So I'm going to come down here and click on tile map at the bottom. And that then shows us those same tiles, but it looks a little bit different, right? So over here, we're sort of setting which tiles we're gonna use, um, because if you've got a big sprite strip or lots of different info, you can pick different things, make the, the tiles larger or smaller and things like that as well. We're not worrying about any of that at the moment. We just wanna click over to tile map. Now we're just gonna use the squares as they are. I'm going to grab this little green dude here, which is in the middle of that one. And I'm just going to uh, see, I've got the pencil selected here. So now I come up here and if I click, it paints a little green square. If I hold it down, it will keep painting, right? So it's just like a kind of a, a bitmap drawing tool or a good old pixel art drawing tool, yeah? 
So you can uh, have a bit of a play around with that in a little while. What I want us to do though is talk about a few different ways we can use this tile map. So I actually, um, as you can see, have got different features in this tile map. That's why I thought we'd pick something that's not just one plain square, but actually we've got a few different things we can play around with without, without getting too complicated. So if we have a look at this cave here, if I click and drag, so it's now selected all of those tiles, I can now come up and see how it's got the entire cave ready to place now. So when you're trying to do things that are a bit larger, you can actually click and drag and then it acts like it's one big thing. You don't have to do each individual tile of the larger thing. So I'm gonna pop a cave in there. Maybe I'm gonna grab these tiles here and I can pop them in too. Now there are other things too. You might notice like we've got this uh, rectangle tool. You can probably imagine what you could get up to with that. We've also got over here a paint bucket tool. You know, if you've used many uh, paint tools or pretty much anything from MS Paint to Photoshop, that paint bucket probably looks familiar to you. So I'm sure you're gonna be able to work out what to do with that. That's pretty much the tour I wanted to give for today. We've got a bit of a feel for things. So what it's time for now is for you to start making your amazing first tile map. You've got the skills, you've got the information now to actually start painting that map exactly as you like it. Don't make it too big. Right, just you know, give yourselves maybe if we have a look at this one here, I'll, I'll do it with a, with a rectangle. Um, maybe we want something like this sort of a size, right? Have a crack at that, put in different features, play around with the water, the caves, all of that until you've got something that you like just the way it is. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put up a must, uh, may, might, which is just a list of three things things that you really need to get done in this lesson, things that would be great if you do get done in this lesson, and things that you could think about doing if you've got all the other stuff already done, all right? So that's gonna pop up on the screen. When that's up there, give it a pause. And then once you've caught up, done all the things you need to do, hit unpause and we'll wrap it up together at the end. All right, have fun making your tile map. Well, hopefully like me, you've had a chance to have a bit of a play around with the tile map and create something that's gonna be a little bit interesting for your character to explore in our next lesson. So before we finish up, let's make sure that we save what we've been working on. So in um, a Mac like I'm using, it's gonna be Command S or it could be Control S for you. And then I'm just gonna call it world.tscn and that is now saved. All right, so to debrief, today we created our first project in Godot and we created a tile map for our character to explore. So next time we're gonna create our player character and we're gonna create our first script to control our player's movement. So to wrap it up, here's a quote of the week. Time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Thanks Bertrand Russell. See you guys in the next lesson.